another week of performance review where I go over the analytics behind the scenes algorithm stuff regarding how an anime reaction channel is run. If you don't know, by the way, I intentionally go live on YouTube too on my phone with the ceiling staring up and the title says reactions on Twitch. Twitch. You're supposed to click the link in chat. Please don't just start the phone stream thinking something is going to happen. Okay, this is this is how it works. First, or let's check out. I want to talk about um, Apothecary Diaries first thing. So already, can you see the difference in viewership of, let's say, the Arcane video versus the Apothecary Diaries, right? It's 4.4K views after one day. And, you know, it hasn't been a complete day in a couple hours just yet. 1.9K. But you can clearly tell the difference in what people really want. So let's bring up this video and let's bring up this video. So take note that Apothecary Diaries, this shit got 481 likes. That is quite significant. It tells me that like my audience actually wants it and it's not tourists. If you look at Arcane, not so much, right? It's like, actually, interesting. Okay, okay, hold up. Let's think about this. So, I mean, it's underperforming. <laughs> People are unsubbing too. Fantastic. I hope that you guys continue to unsub, actually. If anyone's watching this, like, you should just, like, unsub if you don't like the content. You being around as a dead sub, it just wastes everyone's time. It's better if you unsub. And over here, we got 4.4k. So the viewership here is significantly higher, right? And the basis of these videos, right? Other than just me just, you know, farming a short video to just pad, you know, views is it's like a litmus test. I want to kind of like dip my toe in the water to see, do you guys actually care about it? And yes, Apothecary Diaries, absolutely. Let's look at the audience breakdown. And look at that shit. 60-40 split getting how much views? 60-40 split getting 4.4k views is insane because 4.4k views for me it's really hard to get that kind of number through my community alone usually it's due to some different trends and tourists coming in but we're at that level we are growing at a significant rate where now even a 60 40 split of sub to not sub can create you know views like this which is quite cool for arcane i don't think enough time has passed to really see it okay it's 65 35 so of my audience that exists, I just don't think that Arcane is going to do well. And I already went over it in this video. The logic is, Season 1 I've already watched. Season 2 is airing right now. It will be in my best interest to captivate on the trends. But how much people that actually watch Arcane are anime reaction enjoyers? Now, many people in the comment section are deluded. Because you guys are actual people that want to watch this. You guys are the vocal minority, right? Of course, you're going to say 100% care about Arcane, but everyone is not me. That's a very good, you know, comment. Like, obviously, you guys want it. That's why you clicked on the video. But so many people also just didn't even click on the video and don't care about it. So just realize that whatever you think that you want and whatever you think that my audience is, you're living in a little bubble and that's totally fine. But just be aware there is so much more out there that has opposing opinions to you and may not enjoy it, even though you are an enjoy my content and enjoy Arcane too. The thing is, you can also farm outside of Arcane. There's own documentaries about Arcane reviews and League of Legends stuff. But here's the problem. What you think is, oh, there's content to farm. But I bet you the performance of those farm wouldn't even be good because the content does not align with the interest of my audience. Not only that, if it even popped off, right? Let's just think about a hopeful scenario where it popped off, it went viral, a bunch of tourists are coming in. Those people most likely will not be watching these other videos, right? I'm very intentional about what kind of videos am I making? What kind of audience am I targeting? After this, you know, farm, will they stick around? The last thing you want to do is make viral videos, bring in dead subs from different corners of the, you know, internet and have them just, you know, leave as soon as, you know, what they came for as a tourist is done. It's the worst thing to do. That's why I don't chase views. I chase a community, right? Who wouldn't watch, who wouldn't watch you react to Arcane? More people like it than not. But again, right, you have to realize that in your perspective, of course you want to. You are the vocal minority speaking out. But... For every one of you, there could be like a hundred others that just doesn't care and wants other anime reactions, okay? 
Also, Arcane is like 1.5 episodes a month, 30 minute episodes. Yes, I talked about this in the, you know, the video about how the standard length of an anime, you know, episode is like 24 minutes long. Arcane, this shit's like movie length, man. It's too much. And now you're thinking about, okay, this topic is probably going to underperform. And then we're also replacing like two to three extra slots of different anime reactions that could have popped off to invest in something that's underperforming. Like, does that make sense? And <laughs> Bali dog, <laughs> much love, much love, much love. But uh, basically, like you guys can say all you want, but at the end of the day, it's probably not going to happen. Maybe I can make a different channel for these kind of shows. I don't fucking know. But hey, good news is Apothecary Diaries 100% locked in. We will be farming this as soon as we're caught up on Spirit Chronicles, I think. Uh, let's see. How about some drama videos, huh? <laughs> We've been uh, farming a lot of uh, schizo drama guys recently. Here's one, and where's the other one? Uh, this one. They're still screeching on Twitter. They keep tagging me and everything, <laughs> trying to make memes. And I think that my goal is done. I think that because of how lonely and schizo these kids are, I've farmed them, gave them attention, and now you guys are also fighting with them in the threads. So now they feel less lonely, and I am just a merciful god creating friendships. These videos are, you know, it's, it's, it's just dumb entertainment, right? Everybody loves spicy drama. Let's see. Most of it is from our audience, though. I thought that maybe some title like this would be wide appealing enough to kind of like go viral and hit like a bunch of tourists. But we're pretty much tapped out on the isekai enjoyers on YouTube who also may enjoy stupid drama online. At the end of the day, there is nothing serious happening here. This is the most unserious thing you could possibly do. We're fucking farming the mentally ill 14-year-old kids online. It's pointless. It's stupid. But it's fun. There's, I think there's a time and place to kind of, you know, do these farms. Next up. Let's look at Assassination Classroom. So. Assassination Classroom is low-key. Just dead. Not dead. But relative to Spirit Chronicles. And. Index. As class is kind of flopping, and I think that it's not fair to judge the most recent episodes because, you know, the hype episodes like that, it can outperform even like the pop-up episode of Toru. It's simply underperforming right now because some of these earlier episodes in Season 2, it's just not the most compelling part of the show that they cared about. That's why it's un seemingly underperforming, but still, it's actually doing really well. Let's do a quick assassination classroom uh, filter and see how they are doing. So on an average, right? From the beginning, 388 likes, 443, somewhere between 300 to 400. Obviously, the more episodes we go, the more people get filtered out and so on and so on. But right now, it's okay. It's doing well enough. Let's see how well this episode did. The Nagisa popping off moment, season one finale. See, when the topic, you know, when the show is like fun, there is some episodes for sure that I don't think many people would care about a reaction for, so it makes a lot of sense to me. There's no new people coming in because obviously these are content specifically made for returning viewers and community members alike. Right? 50-50 split. There it is. Let's compare that to... Spirit Chronicles. And Spirit Chronicles is actually very impressive. 628 likes. 628 likes on this. 5.7k views. You can tell that people actually give a fuck about this. I've noticed your second channel low-key gets more views consistently. Yes. And this is not a surprise. I've made so many videos about explaining why the average viewership is higher in the second channel compared to the main channel despite the difference in subscriber base. If you don't know why it's happening, you're clearly not paying attention. You have no clue what the strategy of the second channel is. You simply see a video with numbers and you compare that to a main channel, which is doing horizontal variety stuff compared to a second channel, which is the exact opposite of doing precise, you know, low volume content. If you don't understand that, you're just not fucking learning, bro.
You're wasting your time. 414 likes. Almost 400 likes, right? Five points. Oh, of course, the first episode's always going to do well. Make no mistake that, like, this is going to fall off, though. And I don't know when it's going to fall off. I think that by... I think that by second season, it'll fall off. Babe, Babe does nostalgic. Guys, stop fucking spreading misinformation. That's how peak Beyblade is. Beyblade is nostalgic. That has nothing to do with why the second channel is getting more viewership. There's other content creators farming Beyblade, but they don't know how to fucking create a one-trick pony channel. Therefore, their viewership suffers, even though they have more subs than me. Like, what I hate the most is when you monkeys just talk so confidently about misinformation, then other monkeys pile on. It's the blind leading the blind. If you at this point don't fucking understand why the second channel gets more average viewership, come on. You're, you're smarter than that, right? You've got to be smarter than that, right? Because, like, this is actually so disappointing at this point that you're parroting these stupid talking points of Beyblade Peak and Nostalgia. Come on. How stupid can you be? Pretty stupid, apparently. But on the other topic, Spirit Chronicles, it's doing well. I'm just very um worried i'm worried about season two when it comes around and i think because it's consistent on the second channel do you not think that i'm consistent on the main channel no genuinely are you guys actually still confused why the second channel and the first channel, the differences the exact strategy that i fucking tell you you can't be that dumb are you completely new here? What do you mean consistency? Motherfucker, I'm uploading eight videos a day daily here on the main channel. What's consistency? I skip some days on the Beyblade channel. <laughs> Y'all gotta be so fucking stupid. It's this simple. The more focused your topic is, the more you only make content on one topic, the faster you can spread your fucking views through the recommendation system because the algorithm understands that, oh, this guy's this specific topic. Every video you make is just this pop topic. I'm going to keep giving it to those topic enjoyers. Compare that to the main channel. Do you want... We're farming 30 separate topics daily. If you don't understand this by now, you're genuinely not fucking listening. You're not understanding shit. Like, come on. Just... I would hope that my audience is a bit smarter than the average monkey. I would really hope that you guys are just a little bit more intelligent than the average retard just mindlessly consuming. I intentionally do these things to teach you and this is where you're at? Truly, you're just a bunch of disappointments. But anyway, Spirit Chronicles is perfectly fine. I'm just worried about Season 2. Next up. Blue Lock is still doing well. What the hell is happening with blue... Oh, shit, before we go do that. Uh, I want to go to the Spirit Chronicles. So let's compare the most recent video, and let's compare the uh, first video. Let's compare these two. 4.1k. 5.7k. 5.8k. Nice, 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 nice. Very good. Let's look at the RPM. Revenue made was 280 per 1,000 views, which is not that good. It used to be a good measure for me when I was struggling. But now we should be in the three to four category. If you look at over here, revenue, 243. I mean, there's not much I can do about, you know, these RPM values. Different seasonal times, advertisers pull in or pull out. January is also the lowest advertisement uh, ad revenue for anybody across the board because all the, you know, uh, important holidays to make people spend money is kind of done and people are chilling. But it's doing good. It's doing good. The audience, obviously, like, is that a surprise? Like, look at this shit. Look at this shit. The first video I made for Spirit Chronicles, yet <laughs> there's no new people coming in. Why? Because this is a shitty isekai, and we are shitty isekai enjoyers, so it makes sense that it's just my existing audience base. There's no tourist here. This is completely earned, right? And you need to understand when I say earned. This means that even if Spirit Chronicles Season 2 is happening, I'm not getting carried by that. Because if I was, there'd be plenty of new people showing up. This means that I can farm old animes whenever I want because my audience cares about it. 
And the more you understand who your audience, the better you can deliver videos that can be more accurate to that audience. The algorithm is more confident about the signals being sent because every returning viewer is enjoying every other video as well. And you continue to grow. Not enough data, you know, obviously, you know, but to suggest this, but look at, look at this shit, bro. 63-36 split. 63.6, 36.4 split, yet we're able to get 4.8, 4.1k views. That is significant to me. This is extremely, extremely good. That complete, it's not even 50-50, it's just even more of just my audience and no new people, and we can pull out these numbers out of thin air. Fucking stunning. So Spirit Chronicles, killing it. All right. Next up, let's talk about Blue Lock. Right, Blue Lock has been uh, doing really well. And Blue Lock, I think, is an example where uh, I'm not really earning it because even though the views and the watch time is perfect, if you look at the audience, look at that, right? Complete opposite. You see this shit? Compare this to Spirit Chronicles. Look at that. None of my audience really care about Blue Lock, but I am delivering a demand when the supply may be low and there's a lot of enthusiasts for Blue Lock looking for this content. And while they not be, may not be subbed, and you know what? Being subbed, unsubbed, doesn't fucking matter to me. What I care really more is about the returning audience. Maybe if we click something like this, right? Maybe we'll see more audience. This is a U20 trailer arc. And if you look at this, look at that, right? This is what I care about. I don't really give a shit about this because returning audience viewers can still be not subscribed. I genuinely don't care if you're subbed or not subbed to me. If you told me that I could get an average viewership of 10K per video, if I, you know, lose all 24,000 subs and start at 1,000 subs just to be monetized, I take it in a heartbeat because the sub count does not fucking matter. The sub count is an inflated value. And most of the times it's a very fraudulent way, a um, fraudulent metric of assessing how well a channel is doing. The only thing that matters is the monthly viewership for long form content, excluding shorts. And we are absolutely killing it. Reaching almost 1.5 mil per month right now, doing long form content reactions. We are actually killing it. And this is great. And why is that? Because obviously I understand how to create a community and that's why you're seeing incremental jumps like this in a very steady, steady way. But Blue Lock, right? So Blue Lock, what I'm trying to tell you is this shit I didn't earn. Who knows what'll happen to all these new people showing up to my channel? Will they be Isekai enjoyers? Probably not. And we're going to get a lot of dead subs from the influx of Blue Lock enjoyers. Don't get it twisted. Simply because you had 10 subs, right? Simply because you had 10 subs, you know, coming in here. None of this shit really matters at the end of the day. Nine subs here, right? None of this shit really matters because at the end, what happens when Blue Lock is over? Those are probably going to be dead subs. And you try your best to mitigate the amount of dead subs you can get. But at the same time, try to really consolidate and building a community. And what, am I going to not farm Blue Lock just because my audience doesn't care? No, I think it's still worth it to put your bid in and try your best to convert these people. About 10% of the new audience, I think, will stick around, which is usually the number that happens. But um, Blue Lock right now is doing fantastic. 290 RPM. Let's look at the revenue here. It's probably going to be lower because it's a shorter video, right? Because remember, watch time does matter into the calculation of RPM. But Blue Lock is very steady, very good. Every video, you know, it's pretty good. And you can also notice the difference in like uh, the amount of like, if a video has more likes, it usually means that like people actually give a fuck to actually click it, meaning they're most likely loyal audiences. So notice how like, even though these videos are getting like almost 5K views, it can't even break 300 likes because those are tourists. These are completely new people eventually trying to, you know, uh, figure out if they want to watch me or not. Here, one second. Let me bring up the Microsoft Paint. I am bringing up Microsoft Paint to show you, illustrate some points of, you know, what I mean by stuff like this. Fucking Microsoft Paint, so long. Here we go. So remember, not every audience is the same. Let's create two separate categories, right? In the beginning, these are tourists. 
people have found my channel and they're willing to just watch it. These are the blue lock people. Eventually, they start to realize that they're into my commentary and want to watch more things. Maybe not everything, but they're starting to realize, oh, a community series exists. The polls, I see, they get more involved. And the more people that you consolidate over time later on, then it becomes like this. These are the diehards. You're probably on Twitch. You're probably on Patreon. You'll pretty much watch whatever I do because you have just enjoyed my content and you're part of the community. The problem with Blue Lock and shit like that again, right, is all about your intention with the audience. Right now, Spirit Chronicles, right? Spirit Chronicles is all this audience. That's why, like, we can get so many views, right? That's why we can get so many views for Spirit Chronicles and get so many likes too, right? It's about equal, but like we get more likes because people are more caring about it. Same with like Toto too, right? These community series are mostly like, you know, these people, these people. And your goal is to, you know, convert people like that, right? And how do you target this people? Trends, right? Trends. What's trends? Dun dun dun! Blue lock! Anything that's trending on a weekly basis, you want to make content around that to bring new people coming in. But if that's all you're doing, what happens is that people leave immediately after Blue Lock's done, right? And again, most anime reaction channels right now, they're probably getting hard carried by Dan Dan or whatever popular show like Bleach. But when those trends end, what do you have? If you can't convert these people to community members, if you can't do this process, you simply have them leaving. And this is called dead subs, right? Dead subs. And you don't want that. You don't want dead subs. And that's why sub count is such a fraudulent number because most people only know, they don't even know. They just do this process over and over without understanding that you need to build upon this. And then you need to build upon this, right? And if you get here, then you have actual fans willing to watch you for whatever you want. And that's why you see the steady increase rise over time, right? Because I'm building that audience every day it's a long arduous process you can't just do this shit overnight you could go viral overnight but virality simply will lead to dead subs if you don't know how to convert right over here so hopefully that makes a little bit more sense what i'm talking about earned deserved right tourists community members different terms there's intention behind these words now 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 what else should we check out um what about we check out taru Description. Index. Index is killing it. It's doing well. It's doing very well. It's doing better than I ever expected. And the craziest shit is, again, is that we're not even on Railgun. You gotta understand, people don't really care about Index as much as Railgun or Accelerator. And the fact that something that people don't really care as much is still performing this well just confirms my theory that, yes, my prediction on Tordano Index being the next Data Live was true. Data Live, again, is the reason why all of this shit started to change. Because I asked my audience, what you wanna watch? And someone was like, Data Live! And I'm like, what the fuck is Data Live? And I googled it and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> oh no, it's gonna be a shitty harem lolly bait anime! Are you sure? And y'all like, yep, I wanna watch it. So I was like, okay, <laughs> let's watch it. And then it was a great experience. I love Data Live. People might think it's weird. People might think it's cringe. I enjoyed that shit so much. And it was the starting point of the community building process, right? So Data Live, that's why I always say Data Live is the series that saved my channel because at that point is when this new content strategy system started to take into place. And back then, Data Live was not airing, bro. Data Live was literally just dead. Right? Season 5 announcement was gonna drop as soon as I finished all four seasons, which was crazy. The timeline was insane. The fact that as soon as I finished all four seasons of Data Live, then there was a season 5 announcement, I was like, holy shit, that's crazy. This is like meant to be. Quite often, there's these communities, right? And let's uh, bring this up. Sometimes, there's like these communities, right? And it's like a different audience, right? This is the Data Live community. This is the Toru community. Whatever, right? And they're diehard. They're always just active. They always want new shit. And even if it's not a trend at the moment, even if 
you know, Data Live is not airing on a weekly basis and no one's talking about it, because this community exists and because the way that the YouTube recommendation system works, you can harness, you can harness the power of different communities if they're strong enough and react to old shows and still get new people coming in and grow. And a lot of people can't accept the fact that, what do you mean? People need to type, you know, currently popular airing anime on the YouTube search engine to find your videos. Why would I ever make a video on a reaction about an old series? It's because you don't understand this diagram. You don't understand this and you think that the average person just simply finds content through the YouTube search engine. And let me prove to you how wrong you are by just clicking this video. Actually, let's let's click uh, this video. Why not? It's got more views. I guarantee you that the amount of viewership from the search engine is insignificant. And how can I tell? By looking over here. How viewers found this video? Recommendations. Do you see that? YouTube recommends videos to viewers on home and alongside the videos that they're currently watching on their up next. Unless you're looking for a specific guide on like, I don't know, a review, a guide on some sort of product, game guide, stuff like that. That's when the search engine becomes more useful. But for a lot of content, most people don't give a fuck and they simply click what they see on the home page. And you'll see that the breakdown of, you know, viewership, where's the search engine? Bro, we got 49 views off the search engine. And do you know why? Well, obviously, because it's not even trending right now, right? But I'm trying to tell you that there's so many different ways of getting viewership that the search engine does not matter. And if you need to rely on this shit, either your niche, you know, is one of those, you know, video, you know, review, like specific, like uh, guide on a product or like, you know, product review or stuff like that. Maybe you'll, you'll, people will be seeking out, you know, Dyson vacuum model M319, blah, 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 right? Blah, 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 stuff like that. Um, and to prove to you that this is also the same for currently airing shows. Um, I mean, we could just simply even like look at Blue Lock. How are new people finding me, Blue Lock? If I do this, the trailer reaction, how did people find me? Was it through a search engine? A decent amount. This time it's not as insignificant, right? Because it's actually trending right now. But notice the significant difference in the recommendation system where all the views come from, right? You can still tell that it's always going to be dominated by recommendations. And in fact, if you look at the most viewed video that I have, and this I think is true for a lot of people, Eminence and Shadow season finale. Let's see it. I think quite a bit of people did find it through the search engine. Let's look at the reach. A decent amount, right? So if the video has, you know, 70K views, right? 73,000 views, how did people find this? Most people through the suggested videos and browse features. Again, this is the recommendations, by the way. It's just kind of like separate into subcategories, but this is the recommendations. YouTube search engine is 10K. It's not as significant as these two combined, right? You can clearly tell that like, and then there's playlists and channel pages and stuff like that, right? Uh, another interesting thing is, let's look at the uh, views again. This video. Oh, need some. It's fucking oh. big step bro, right? Step bro. Notice how like you don't need to put a title. Obviously, the title does ex exist in the description, by the way. And just because an anime reaction doesn't have a title in the main title like this, it doesn't mean it's not going to show up in the search engine. It's still going to show up in the search engine. It just doesn't matter as much. Maybe I can make a separate video about it, but uh, let's look at the distribution and look at this no one gives a fuck about you know <laughs> the actual plot they only care about the incest moments man uh let's look at the reach and yep people find this stuff where's the search engine bro 7k out of 50k views but notice how everything else makes this shit up right look at the difference look at the difference it's all through recommendations that's why like i've shown you multiple examples to portray why youtube search engine doesn't matter unless you're in a specific niche. Even if it's trending right now, it's all about recommendations. Let's look at this Gigguk video. So on a seasonal basis, right? We have these Gigguk videos that show up. What the fuck? Request review. Motherfucker. When did that shit get limited ads? 
I swear to God. Uh, I could make way more money. I think I got fucking stole. I, I got robbed. I got fucking robbed. Whatever. It's whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, what am I doing? We're searching by date. And we're going to look for the gig video. Oh, no. You know what? Let's talk about Tower of God. I did another test with the thumbnails. Tower of God did pretty well. It's picking up. Obviously, it's not the amount of viewerships that I would love to have. But it's good enough, right? Let's look at this shit. It's, it's performing. It's definitely performing in the typical range. You can see the range. Watch time's decent too. Let's look at the audience tab. Probably not enough time has passed. Yeah. But 50-50 split for subs and not subs. And let's look at these thumbnails. Which one was the best? So, boom. Look at that, guys. So, I did this in order of like what people would care about. And my theory was, I think a thumbnail, the only thing that matters is how simple and how catchy it is. The more convoluted it looks like in, you know, thumbnail 2, the less, I think, attention-grabbing potential there is. A simple, clear face of Ran, you know, doing his power stuff, definitely got more watch time compared to this. And the reason why this failed, in my opinion, is because, well, the colors kind of are too bad, right? When I saw, you know, Rack and Bum, they're hugging it out. It's just like... It, it, it's just... It doesn't pop compared to the first thumbnail, right? Like, Ran's overall skin complexion makes the thumbnail lighter. But the third one, it's very darker. On top of that, maybe people don't really give a fuck about Bomb and Rack. I'm not sure. People were more hyped about Ran's new form. So that's why you're seeing the difference of, you know, 7.2% margin here. But at the end of the day, a thumbnail, it's, it's, it really doesn't need to be, like, super crazy. I think that most people are wasting money by hiring thumbnail editors. And I'm probably wrong about this because, you know... Thumbnails are very important, but the simplest thing, I think, is the best thing. And you don't need to spend exorbitant amount of money to try to make the most catchy effect. This is a great thumbnail. When I look at it, look at the colors, right? A controversial figure with the video game, with the company in the back, Sony. It's like, what? What's going on with Kim Jong-un? And then lights like this. It's a great thumbnail for sure, right? But I don't think a thumbnail is honestly that necessary for your videos to pop off. If... You're not, if, like, I think a thumbnail matters more if you're trying to target, like, tourists and shit. But if you're all about, like, community, then you kind of become, like, most critical. Where you don't make thumbnails. <laughs> Tell me that these thumbnails are catchy. They're not. You know why? Because they know who he is. And they love his content. So he doesn't need to upload a thumbnail. And people will still click the views because he's gotten to that point of, you know, grinding it out and building an audience. And that's kind of the same case with me, obviously, not even close to the same scale or magnitude as Moist Critical, but these thumbnails are very lazy. But you can see the simplicity and the idea of it being catchy, right? It's a simple face, simple face that's clickable, bright colors. That's always what I'm looking for. Now, let's talk about... Uh, the Giguk video. Yeah. So, notice this. 7k views, 400 likes. Uh, this is meaning... Because it's not like a... I think that community show, it's gonna be like a 10% of viewers to like ratio. Right? 3,000 views means roughly 300 likes. But whenever you get like a 5% ratio, 5 to 10, that means that it's obviously tourists, new people showing up. And why is that? Well, it's a Giguk video, right? It's a Giguk video. It's appealing to a wider audience. Great. A lot of people are finding my content through the browse features. Great. Things are looking great over here. All through recommendations. A little bit through YouTube search engine, but again, you can see that the percentage makeup, the YouTube search engine does not matter. Let's look at the audience. There's a little bit new people coming in. I think that if we wait a mo like a couple more days, this video, uh, more new people will be coming in. So I think the blue line should be higher than it seems. And look at that split. Actually, not as significant as I thought it would be. I thought that it would be like a, I don't know, like a 70-30 split of like not sub to sub. But this is like pretty close. This is honestly not that far off from a community series, which means, what does that mean? 
It means that a lot of anime enjoyers that watch Gigok are slowly being converted to me enjoyers. Great. All right. Let me take a piss real quick. Be right back. I'm back. Let's check out some next videos. Yeah, I want to check out the Nicholas Light video. Where is he? There it is. And boom. A similar uh, ratio between 5 to 10%, which means that I think more new people are definitely checking this content out. And this content is very interesting. It's very interesting because it's also actually picking up. Nice. That's good to see. I don't know why it's picking up out of nowhere. But um, it's interesting because... Oh, it's a 50-50 split. Yeah, it's interesting because it's politics. This is not an anime reaction video. And obviously, everybody knows Nicholas Light. Huge, huge creator. And shout out to Nick. Drop by. You're the man. I will always go out to bat for other content creators. If they've been nice to me. If you fucking start shit out of nowhere like Mad Lad, I'ma call you Fraud Lad and fucking farm a video off of you. But Nick? Great. And this video is just talking about the current political climate and his reasons of why he didn't vote and the expectations that other people that are simply posturing and trying to seem like a moralist who actually don't give a fuck about the current state of America and then projecting that onto Nick saying you're a bad person. That's pretty much the topic of the video. And politics is messy. You rarely ever want to bring up politics if you're not a politics content creator, if you're Hassan, of course you're going to talk about politics. But I'm an anime reaction channel. You shouldn't be coming to me for politics. We're here to just watch anime and have a good time. If you're coming to me as a role model or to learn morals and ethics, you got the wrong guy. I'm a piece of shit. But the way that I navigate when handling political content, I think is compelling to many sides. Because... I don't justify the acts on either side, but present logic and try to make you think in the perspective of people and why the outcome is the way it is. And because I also speak from the heart and I'm not too scared of saying what I want to say, I think a lot of people definitely enjoy that part of me. Therefore, the video is being well received. Therefore, what's the revenue? 1.75? Very poor. Wah wah. Let's look some of the comments though. They are fucking glazing. These comments are fucking glazing. Oh, you are more informed and in touch with reality than 90% of Americans regarding our country despite being Canadian. The most based and intelligent reaction channel out there. You should get a Nobel Prize or something. Bro is getting glazed harder than Reinhardt for real. <laughs> this is an insane glaze, but I, I, I still appreciate it. Um, But that's pretty much it. The, uh, just... Not really drama, but it's definitely a controversial video with a big creator on the thumbnail. Of course, people are going to click onto it and watch it, right? And oh, this video is startled. So, <laughs> some context about this video. And it's very well received. 4.2k views, right? 96.1% likes. It's well received because I think that I'm a very genuine person that gives an, like an objective observation on what's happening and give my own takes, right? And the whole video is the guy named Trigger Senpai basically saying ReZero's trash because I didn't pay attention and I don't understand the show and I don't like the main character. 
not liking the main character because you don't identify with them and thinking he's a loser. That's perfectly fine. But there were so many things in the video where there was no logic presented, where so much misinformation is being presented. He doesn't even understand the show, yet he's making these claims. And I'm just like, nah, this is stupid, right? This is stupid. If you go and watch the video, you understand exactly what's happening. And if the video was truly bad, then I think it would be received in a completely different way. But you can see all the comments is just glaze, 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 glaze. He did make a... <laughs> Apparently, Trigger Senpai got so triggered that last night he went live on YouTube to react to my video for about two hours, then privated the video, the stream, when he finished streaming. But the portion of him reacting and crashing out is uploaded onto a different channel. So let's look. It's a two minute video, bro. It's a two minute video. I don't, sorry, it's a two hour video. I don't know if we're gonna be reacting to this. When does it start actually? Oh no, it's a two hour reaction. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. That's crazy. I'm not gonna do that. that that's fucking crazy, but wonder why, wonder why is just like, why did he post it on a different account? Why did he not, like, post it on his main account? Why did he private the stream? Like, bro is a rage bait channel, but now he can't take the heat? Like, you're getting what you asked for. Just fucking make it public on your own channel. Why are you being a pussy and hiding around? This is also very racist, by the way. I don't condone this. Because if you look at the thumbnail, I don't know he's black. When you intentionally say this to someone who is black, that is absolutely racist. In the video, I absolutely called him a stupid monkey. But he's an anonymous YouTuber. His face, his face is not seen anywhere. How the fuck am I supposed to know he's black? Based on the way he speaks? Should I then be racially profiling him and saying, oh, this is how a black guy sounds like? That's crazy. That's even, that's crazy racism. So I apologize if anyone took that the wrong way. If you're not, you know, frequently watching content in my channel, then of course you're going to think that like monkey just comes out of nowhere. It's more akin to how Geto Suguru says monkey in Jujutsu Kaisen or Frieza from, you know, Dragon Ball. The logic behind the statement monkey is we are human beings. Human beings have intellect that can override our instincts. But stupid people get overwhelmed by this different feelings of wrath or greed or envy or whatnot. The seven deadly sins, which is very ironic because, you know, Reezer is all about that. And if those sins override your capability of rational thought, you start crashing out. And that's what I call a monkey because you can't control your human emotions and you're just like wilding out. That's what I call a monkey. Someone so stupid that they cannot calmly compose, like, respond to something. That's what that is. This, again, I don't condone this shit. This is absolutely racist. Don't do that shit. Uh, getting back to it, though. This video. So, the audience... There is a little bit of new people coming out, I guess. Not really. It's 50-50 split. This is like, uh... Hold on. This is so... I wanted more, like, tourists to show up. I'm really trying hard to, you know, try to go viral with these, like, ReZero videos to, like, make it more appealing to, like, a wider audience of ReZero enthusiasts, but it's really hard. It really is hard to break out of the audience. And let me explain to you. So, this is something I'm, I've been trying to really figure out, but I still don't have, you know, a good idea of how to do this. And basically, what happens in YouTube is that in the beginning, the algorithm will create an audience for you, right? This is the amount of people that you're being exposed to, right? And in these audience, the best thing you can do is to constantly make videos what this audience take cares about. Because I only make Beyblade videos and my audience is all Beyblade in the second channel, that's why the average viewership is so high in the second channel compared to the main channel. Now, if we're going to talk about, there's cons of it. 
I obviously can't be pumping out eight videos in the second channel. The reason why my main channel has 1.5 mil views, but the second channel has 200k is obviously because there's different constant strategies being had. And I can't like simply like because I'm so focused in the second channel, I'm also kind of limited in what kind of other content I can make. Therefore, it's harder to like pump out volume, right? So again, there's pros and cons to everything. But this is the audience that immediately tells you. But what happens is that you may fuck up and start creating different uh, subsections, different audiences, right? You may have Reezer Enjoyers here. You may have Rom... Like, sorry. You may have, like, uh, Isekai audience here. You may have Romcom Enjoyers here. You may have Battle Shonen Enjoyers here. You may have Moe Slice of Life Enjoyers here. See what I'm showing you about the different audiences? Even though in the beginning, you started off with this big pool of audience, because you're making different content, and if there is no overlap between them, they're dead subs, right? You make content around this, these people don't give a fuck. You need content around this, these people don't give a fuck. What you really want to do is make sure that even if you're like making content, try to have a big overlap, right? Like maybe a bunch of isekai enjoyers actually do enjoy, you know, harm, you know, etchy shit because I think there definitely is an overlap. And now you have, you know, an overlapping audience, even though you're also investing into a different audience, right? You're kind of like working with that. And after this logic being presented, what I really have trouble with is expanding this circle because I'm working just in the confines of this circle, right? I'm only working limited here. I can't get a bigger circle. I, I, I it's, it's hard to just like, because like YouTube has to open the floodgates and do this shit, right? It's like, okay, we'll give you a new complete audience. And this does happen sometimes. One way that I figured out how this kind of works is just through diligence. And I don't know if other channels can have the similar experience, but um, here, let me bring up what I'm talking about. If we look at the analytics right now on a lifetime basis, right? Lifetime basis, we're looking to views and things are great. Things are absolutely great. But if we look at the audience type, do you notice there's a resemblance every time, right? Remember, look at the views. See how there's always significant overnight growth like that? There's these spikes. That's when after about three months of like, three months for me, it might be different for a lot of people. That's when the audience, you know, the algorithm is confident and then like gives you up to like a wider audience. And you'll see the spikes overnight. See this shit? See this shit? The blue line is new viewers and you can clearly see a spike happening here, here, here that corresponds to when the spikes of viewership happens overnight. And when that happens, that's basically YouTube lifting the floodgates and, you know, rather than being limited to the circle, it's like, okay, you got a bigger circle of audience now. And then you got a bigger circle of audience now. You know what I'm talking about? But like, I can't do that on command. And it's not one video simply clutching either. It's like, after you've proved to the algorithm for a consistent amount of time, they then lift the floodgates and just shows you a bunch of new people. It's not one single video doing this shit. And yes, anime openings, it's a decent way of trying to, you know, start that shit. Basically, that's how I jump started my second channel, right? But you got to be kind of careful with anime openings because if you're doing random anime openings and they go viral, and let's say you may, I made all Black Clover openings here, right? What then happens is, are you going to keep making Black Clover content or are you just farming anime openings? And if you are, you're just bringing in dead subs all over the place. That's the worst thing you can do. Farming so many different anime opening shit is the worst thing you can do if you're not going to follow up on that series because you're just bringing dead subs, dead subs, dead subs, all tourists. And yeah, you'll get like 100k views, bro. You'll get like 100k views for those anime opening videos. But who gives a fuck? Because there's nothing that happens after. Because at the end of the day, virality, right? Look at this shit. Eminence and Shadow Finale. I always bring you back to what happened right over here on my birthday, actually, February 17th. This shit, virality, does not create a community. It'll simply die off immediately as they're just tourists that want one type of thing. You need to create that community of fans or else you can't fucking grow. And that's what I'm talking about here. I can't just make these clickable, wide appealing videos and expect for, you know, these spikes to happen where I get bigger circles. It's so hard. And, you know, if anyone can just do that on command, well, shit. Why are you watching this video? You should be making YouTube videos just making millions of dollars, right? It's the impossible that I'm trying to figure out. 
Let's look at the most recent Reezer episode. Sure, why not? Nice. I mean, it's typical that Reezer will be popping off in my channel. Do people enjoy? There's some parts, right? There's definitely some parts that, you know, people care more about. What do people not care about here? Uh, this is Liliana. I'm gonna guess that the segment that dips is a Liliana moment. And this is the Yang Sword. This is the Yang Sword popping off. This is uh, Subaru and Liliana. Let's check. So let's look at the peak. It's with Krush right now. Krush. Yeah, yeah, Priscilla. Priscilla popping off with the Yang Sword. Let's look at over. Let's look at the dip. Let's look at the dip. Come on. Oh, amazing. And the uh Liliana song. Liliana song, bro. <laughs> Ain't nobody give a fuck about Liliana singing, bro. <laughs> Padded last time, brother. We didn't need to hear that bullshit. This ain't Lugunica's Got Talent. Get out of here, Liliana. No, I'm sorry. I thought the song was great. I enjoyed her voice, but people didn't like it. They did not like that shit. So it's kind of fun that, you know, people only watch what they really want to watch. Uh, the audience, obviously, you know, no new returning viewers. All returning viewers. 50-50 split. Expected. All right. Is there anything else I wanted to really talk about more? Hmm? I mean, I don't really care about, you know, average performing shows like this because there's not really much to talk about. I just want to talk about, like, definitely, like, spikes here and there. Like, why did a video get so many views and vice versa? Oh, one thing that we can talk about uh, is the Blue Lock video that actually kind of went viral. Not really. It got, like, uh, how many views? Like, 17k views or something? Where did it go? Blue Rock. Blue Rock. Blue Rock. Where did it go? Where is it? Bururoku. Hello? I make too many fucking videos. There's too many goddamn videos. How about we just do this? Boom. This will probably be more efficient. Uh no 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 all the same shit, 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 all the same shit. All the same shit, all the same shit, all the same. Sorry guys, let me just take some time with this. Where did the video go? I don't even know where my videos are anymore because they just upload too many fucking volume. Oh wait, I just gotta do this. What am I doing? Duh, just type blue lock in the search bar, bro. What are you fucking doing? Yeah, there it is. So look, 17K views, 695 likes and by now, enough time has passed and we can see what's happened. Look at that. Bro, look at this. What happened? I'm just reading a Reddit thread. Bro, I spent 20 minutes reading a Reddit thread and I made $56 off of this. And that's not even counting the opportunity cost of like how many people then will then go watch my other videos, maybe even stuff to Patreon and more people watching my videos and then so on and so on. Isn't that crazy that like you can just read a Reddit thread and just do this shit? But why did this happen? I bet not many people watch the entire thing. They watch a bit of it, right? Well, it's because it's a very trending topic. Right? In terms of trying to do the circle thing, I think that I kind of hit it out of the park with Blue Lock, right? Obviously, I can't just like create it out of thin air. I need to be dependent on something trending to talk about, especially if there's controversy. And because Blue Lock is very controversial right now regarding the whole production value, it got this many views. And what was the viewership it breakdown? Look at that. 75% is from browse features, meaning recommendations. 9% from YouTube search engine. Search engine does not fucking matter. Most people found it through Google search. I see. Whatever. The search, you know, search terms are Blue Lock here, here, here. If we look at the audience, look at that. <whistles> look at that shit. For the first time, the blue bar of new viewers is higher than the returning viewers. That is fucking crazy to me, bro. Absolutely crazy that we can do something like that. Because again, if we like compare, I'm going to bring up Dan Dan because I think that's a pretty high performing show, but it still can't really do these you know, viral moments because the nature of you know anime reactions. Where did Dan Dan go? Dan Dan Dan. Dan da Dan. All right, Neko Baba. Great episode. I love Neko Baba so much, bro. Low key might enjoy Dan da Dan just as much as Rizro, if not more. 
And the thing about this is that there's not many new people coming in. Even though the views are high, it's always hard to just break into a completely new audience like that. Yet, look at this shit. Not this. Look at this, bro. That's insane that this many new people are showing up. This is exactly what you want. Now, it needs to be focused, right? Now the expectation is these people want more blue lock content. So I'm delivering blue lock content, but there's definitely going to be dead subs coming from 38 subs over here, right? We got 38 subs you know, being made. It's, it's, it's not going to really work as well. But it's just nice that like, okay, I can hit a, a minor viral moment by captivating on a trend, making a clickable title, right? Blue lock animator speaks out about why it's so bad. So this was a good execution of my strategy of trying to appeal to a wider audience. But if only we could do that fucking every day and then have those people, right? Have the people from the trends coming in, then be turned into loyal subs and then to hardcore subs, right? That is the ultimate goal. When you got new people coming in, you got to convert them. If you don't make them into believers, if you don't make them into cult members, your cult cannot grow. And as a religious figure, you got to keep hyping up saying you're the Messiah, that you'll deliver good shit. And then maybe people will be dumb enough to start believing in the lie. And then the lie becomes reality. And then what happens? We're nearly 25% of the way to the silver play button. And that's pretty much it for today's or this week's performance review. Hopefully you understood what I'm talking about. I think that the most important shit is this, okay? This diagram, if you don't, obviously there's not enough text. It's random fucking bubbles and colors happening. Go back to the video. Try to understand what I mean through the left side of the diagram. This truly is the content strategy that I'm always thinking about. And on the right side of the diagram, it's talking about overlapping audiences, how to get a bigger audience, and so on and so forth. See you next time.